Hey everyone, welcome back to Make a Map, the project where you help me create a map for Team Fortress 2 by providing ideas, feedback, and in some cases, actual map files. Last video, we looked at the first point of our still unnamed Japan themed payload map, so it makes sense that this week we're going to be going over the progress we've made on the second point. So a quick refresher for anybody who hasn't been keeping up with the project, our first point starts near the water and the track makes its way through a small Japanese street lined with houses and shops on both sides. Everything ends up funneling through this first choke point leading to A. Overlooking A is this building that provides a good position for Red to hold. That is everything we had prior to starting point B. So let's hop on over to the subreddit where the comments this time around were all about one word. Bridge. Everyone was overwhelmingly in support of adding a bridge to our map to provide an element of verticality as well as a dynamic element. The most popular post suggested several different types of bridges that raise or lower so we went forward with that in mind. In the Discord, there were several layouts proposed, many of which followed a similar path. In the end, we moved forward with this idea from Tim, which was fairly helpful because he had already mapped it out in Hammer. Uh, unfortunately for me, the brushwork wasn't on the angle that I wanted, so I ended up having to recreate everything from scratch anyway. One issue with the first point was the sight lines. So with point B, we wanted to avoid that if possible, and that's why we decided to have this route curve around the corner. Not only do corners help keep snipers in check, but they also help with optimization. So Tim's layout worked pretty well, everything fed through this choke, so we decided to place a building near point A that Blue could push through as an alternate route. The cart would go through this open route while Blue could flank through the building for a bit of cover. The problem with Tim's layout was there was still the issue of sight lines. Each route consisted of a long lane without any curves, so to help combat this we shortened the routes a little bit as well as placing a prop to block this main sight line on the cart. We also put a walkway over the track in an attempt to cut the sight lines even further. We then went ahead and added the bridge on point B, which also helped cut down on the sight lines while the bridge is up. And the plan is for the bridge to eventually have each side lower to the middle, but for the time being it was just easier to set up with one side, so that's what it is right now. After the route was established, we needed a place to put red spawn. Other payload maps, such as Upward, Badwater, have red's first spawn practically on top of point B, so we knew we wanted it nearby. We decided to have the first exit on this low ground, which would give red a quick way out of spawn as they go defend A, and later on once blue is capped A and they're pushing to the top of this hill, it's a little more risky but it's closer to the action. We also gave red another exit that leads up to the ground level, so they have two options. While defending A, red will spawn closer to the front door, and then once blue caps A, they're going to be pushed back to encourage them to use the second exit. Above red's spawn we place two buildings to provide cover and help red defend once blue is pushed past the bridge. Around this time the point was feeling fairly bare bones, so we went ahead and opened up this building to give Blue a place to attack from, as well as a decent sentry spot for engineers. With all of that in place, the second point was finally ready to test, and we fired up the server to see how it played. After several rounds however, we realized that Blue had only capped B once, and we wanted this point to be more difficult than A, but not that difficult. So we knew we needed to figure out a way to make it easier for Blue to push. One of the biggest issues was the sight lines, particularly from the side lanes straight to point A. To help with this, we actually moved everything over so it didn't line up like it used to. We then extended this wall to completely block the sightline. After that, we added a tunnel leading from the cart to the left route, allowing Blue to push through and clear anyone holding this area. And to help with the sightlines once the bridge was down, we added a fence near B so snipers can't stand all the way at the back. We also added these blocks below the walkway overlooking B, and this narrowed the sightline through the lane considerably. We also narrowed this corridor directly after A because it felt too big. So we thought this was a significant enough change to warrant another playtest, so we went ahead and tried it again, and we found out that it made it easier for Blue, but not nearly enough. Red still ended up winning probably 90% of the games, so we went back to the drawing board. The biggest flaw with this area is that Blue is always pushing from a height disadvantage. There are zero routes available that would give them an advantage over Red. So because of this, we decided to open up two buildings on the left with a bridge connecting them. We placed a medium health kit in one, with ammo in the other. So by using this route, Blue can come out near point B with a height advantage, all while avoiding the main sniper sightlines. This was also a pretty big change, so we went back, playtested it again, and what do you know, Blue actually managed to win a couple of games. In fact, they won more than a couple, they won the majority. So everything seemed good, and we were ready to start detailing. We started with this area, and we knocked it out pretty quickly, creating this really intimidating gate for Blue to push through. I'm really happy with the way this area ended up. Once we were finished with that, we said, let's just play test again. Why not? Because everybody wants to play once it's detailed. And it turns out that the point was still really good for Red. Even after scrambling teams multiple times, Red ended up winning the vast majority of rounds. Which was interesting, because we had just played, and Blue had won the majority. 
So what this comes down to is balancing is tough. <laughs> That's basically it. So when players are playing a map for the first time, it's always going to be easier for blue to win because they can just follow the track. It's kind of more obvious where they're going and red doesn't really know where they're holding yet. So once players have learned a map and they know where to defend, where to put their sentries and things like that, it can play completely differently. And that's what was happening with point B. This sentry spot in particular was incredibly difficult to attack. So again, it was back to the drawing board. We knew we had a fun base and we didn't want to make super drastic changes. So instead we just made some minor things like adding an ammo pack to this room, making it easier for engineers to set up a forward base. Also a small health pack here so blue wouldn't have to completely fall back. And perhaps the biggest change we made was adding a one-way door here. So this one-way door allows blue to use this route to attack, but makes it so it's still only accessible to red by jump classes. So after that, we playtested again. And it played pretty well, we were all pretty happy with it, but something still felt a little off. And thanks to some feedback that we received in the Discord, I was actually able to rework this building between first and second and make it a lot better for blue. By moving this door to the side, it makes it more difficult for red to get behind blue, and that was kind of like a big issue. It was super easy for red to flank. And by making this door over here, red has to pass the track to get behind blue. So we went back, play tested it again, and it seemed to have the desired effect. Blue managed to win the majority of rounds. We made a couple small changes after this. We removed the tunnel and a couple other minor things, but for the most part, we're fairly happy with where it's at. So as you can see, not every point goes as smoothly as the first one went. We only went through two or three iterations before we were happy with the way point A played. This is a pretty stark contrast from the 10 or so versions of B we made. Of course, neither of these points is finished, and as we go on to make more of the map, we might have to come back and make adjustments, but for now, they're good enough to move on to our next milestone, which is the third point. In my opinion, the third point of most payload maps is always kind of underwhelming, so let's change that with our map. As mentioned in the last video, the current idea has been to make the push out of a more urban area into something filled with more natural features. More trees and rocks and cliffs. But we're still going to have to have buildings, and for those buildings, the plan is to use more traditional architecture, such as that seen in Sweden and point B of our map. However, these are just the current ideas. As always, I encourage you all to come up with ideas of your own and post them to the subreddit so others can view and vote on them. In a couple of days, we'll move forward with whatever is the most popular. So that is it for this video. If you want to stay up to date, subscribe to the channel, join the subreddit and Discord to contribute to the project, and follow me on Twitch and Twitter to be notified of when I go live. Live streams are the best way to provide your input, so I encourage you all to stop by and see what's going on. If you want to support me and this project, one of the best ways to do that is to subscribe to me on Twitch. It costs five bucks a month, and if you have Amazon Prime, it's completely free. The main benefit is Twitch subs get a reserved slot on my server, meaning that you're never going to miss a playtest because the server is full. All right, I am done at shilling. <laughs> Appreciate all the support I've received on the series, and I'm excited to see how Point C turns out. So thank you all so much for watching, and I'll catch you all later. Have a good one.